guest today may be a professor of organic chemistry by day at the prestigious Cornell University, but he is also known uh, quite well in the economic circle. He's an avid writer on Zero Hedge. He's a podcaster and uh, he loves getting into controversial topics. And that's why I couldn't wait to bring him back on today. Please welcome to the show. I'm not going to call him professor because he hates it. No, so, Dave. I hate it. Yeah, Dave. You hate it. So, But, but, but people are going to say... Daniela, you're being disrespectful. You're not calling him professor. Anywho, Dave Collin, so good to see you. Uh, it's great to be back. How many times have we done this? Maybe four? You know what? This, yeah, three or four. Yeah, I think you actually hold the position of having the highest click count of all my, of all my podcasts. I, 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 I am aware of that, and I feel the pressure to keep <laughs> that pole position. Let's see oh, if we can beat it. it right now. Um, okay, we're obviously going to talk finance because, like I said, obviously you are a chemistry genius, but some, including Bob Moriarty, who if you're in the gold industry, you know Bob Moriarty, have said you are the greatest investor of all time. <laughs> What's the backstory with Bob? Well, I had to pay him a lot to say that. Um, Bob and I go back so far that you wouldn't know it because I once sent him something and he posted on, on three, two, one gold, his site. Um, and I was, uh, I was, I, I it was posted uh, pseudonymously as Thomas. I used to post on websites as Thomas, which is my son's name. So there's people who go back to the prudent bear chat board 20 years ago with Doug Noland and, and they know me as Thomas. And, um, and, and, and it, one point he reached out in earnest several times he has and then and then we've just been connected since and somehow he's adopted me um and 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 he he he's been really helpful and i don't quite know why but um and and, and we're going to get into why he thinks you're one of the greatest investors we're going to look at what makes up dave's portfolio but first since you are also an academic dave i thought we'd start with this news headline from this week that now nearly 153,000 student loan borrowers currently enrolled in a new repayment plan launched by the Biden administration are, are getting an email or already got an email notifying them that guess what? The remaining federal student loan debt canceled. 1.2 billion in total. Your thoughts? Well, I think Biden's treasonous. How's that? Let's open. Let's open soft okay. and, and then right. get into it deeper later. Okay. Okay. He he doesn't have the power to do so. The Supreme Court rules he doesn't have the power to do so, and then he did it again. So what do you do with a president who who ignores the Supreme Court ruling? And the you know they can't just sit on his shoulder and watch him twenty four seven. So he goes and does it again. What the hell is that all about? So, so I think Biden is the worst president in history. I think everything he does is treasonous at this point. Now, I'm not, I'm, I don't think I'm being metaphorical. I mean, I think he does stuff that really undermines the very existence of the United States. So, so and that's one of them, you know, just ignoring the Supreme Court. I think bigger question, right? Like I said, as an academic, at one of the most expensive and prestigious schools in the nation, should school be this expensive? No. Should no, but be it's an arms. It's an no. It's an arms race. So many, many years ago, the schools were much simpler. So we have we have a huge bureaucracy, but the bureaucracy is brought on by our connections with various governments, and so that's created all sorts of connections. Um, and things that you have to do as a school that, that um, you didn't have to do before. You worked out of a shoebox, right? So you asked the feds for research grants and they didn't seem to care about the details and everything was easy. Now it's not. And now with the whole DEI stuff, there's just all sorts of things going on. Now, with that said, we do have too many deans and too many administrators. We could cut way back. But what's also true is there's an arms race between schools. So if you come to Cornell and we show you lousy dorms and you go to Princeton, they show you brand new dorms, where are you going to go, right? So, so, um, so I would have to say that that arms race is probably a consequence of, you know, bad monetary policy for 40 straight years. And so it is yet another bubble. I, I once talked to a, I can, I, 
keep forgetting his name, but he's a Cornell economist who's known for his, his expertise in college finance. And he said the golden era of academia is over. He, he, I had him in my office and he, he said, I think it's over. I think we've, we've seen the peak and it's downhill from here. And, and it, there's also going to be a rich get richer, poor get poorer. So if you look at some place like Princeton, which has an endowment, I'm going to throw out a wild guess of 50 billion. Cornell's is probably 8 billion. Princeton has a f- small fraction of the number of students. So there, so, so, so place like Princeton, now Stanford because of Silicon Valley, Harvard, of course, you know, some of these schools are, have enormous sums of money. And so it, it's a bidding war in which we're going up against, you know, John Gotti and, and things like that. So Cornell is also much more diverse than those other schools. So Cornell's ranked number one in one critical category. Number one in the nation. We have more top 10 ranked departments than any school in the country. We have 57 top 10 ranked departments. Now, the problem is that is expensive to keep 57 balls in the air at one time. When you say we've reached peak academia, just elaborate a little bit there. I mean, do you think that we're moving toward, we're, we're placing less importance on holding a degree from a Cornell or a Harvard or a Yale? We will. We're not there yet. Um, You know, there's stats from years ago that show that if you, instead of going to college, an average college degree, you you become a UPS driver. Based on the average earnings of a college degree versus the UPS driver, but the lot, the expense of the four years, the lost earnings of the four years, um, the break even age is around 56 or 57, where the college graduate finally crosses the UPS driver. Now, forget the UPS driver, become a plumber, electrician, you know, something that's actually a skill group. You'll, the co- average college kid won't catch him. There will be people who far surpass him. Now, the other thing about colleges in the old days was is that, you know, that, They were places where rich kids went for the most Mm -hmm. part. They were sort of upper middle class and upper class. And and, and as a consequence of that, um, you could study anything you want. You didn't have a payback issue because, you know, it it was stupid to study some some something that would not extinguish the cost of the college education, but you could afford to do it. Nowadays, it's so expensive. You go to Cornell, you major in some subject, which I'm not going to mention because I don't want to piss off the art squad. But you, ma- you, you major in something that for which you can't identify an obvious revenue stream, right? If you come here and learn how to make robots, you're going to do fine, right? But if you come here and you study something out of the dusty archives, you're never going to extinguish your loan. And, and here's an interesting stat, Cornell's English department. Now I'm about to get in trouble. Cornell's English department, tenure track and tenured professors. Um, it's a department that at one point, one could argue had a real sense of purpose because everything that gets written has to be written by somebody, right? All the journalism and everything, but that's going away fast. And there are 46 faculty. That's a big department for, 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 for something that chat GPT is about to take out at the kneecaps. Ouch. Well, to your point about how it was for rich kids and getting back to Biden, this is a quote from his message. He says, from day one of my administration, I vowed to fix student loan programs so higher education could be a ticket to the middle class, not a barrier to opportunity. Well, uh, I would say it's not been a barrier. If you want to go to college, you can go to college. What it has done, it's created a mess that I don't know how to fix. And that is we now have, what, 1.5 trillion in student debt. So Biden's correct in, in addressing this problem. But there's, there's people who busted their chops to pay off their loans and to, to go to college. And so there's a fairness issue, which you're never going to get rid of. So if you all of a sudden just start extinguishing loans, you go, oh, you who you're charging me taxes to pay off those loans. It's a very difficult problem to fix because some 18 year old did agree to pay off the loan and you go, well, it's, it's an 18 year old, you know? So, so I, I have solutions going forward, but I don't have solutions going backward. 